Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily on today's show. I'm joined by the stars of Showtime's steamy new series Submission, Ashlyn Yenny and Skin Diamond. We're getting into kinky sex, fantasies, and the culture of BDSM. They're going to be sharing their experience both on screen and off. So what's in a name? It's not often you can look at a product's name and know exactly what you're getting. Then along came the rabbit company. The rabbit company is focused on one thing, pleasing you with their selection of high-quality rabbit vibrators. One visit to therabbitcompany.com, you'll see what I'm talking about. They've got a perfect collection of rabbit vibes in a variety of shapes and sizes. Whether you're looking to try your first rabbit or your 21st, the rabbit company has a model for you. You've never seen so many rabbits. And just like the company, each vibe has a descriptive name so you know exactly what you're getting. There's the classic, the rotating, the beaded, the G-spot, and my personal favorite, the come hither. It uses the motion like you'd use with your finger to uh, wave someone over or when you're trying to find your G-spot. And everyone on my team, they're all in love with the rabbit ears. It's the perfect little clitoral stimulator. Every rabbit company vibe features easy-to-use controls, highest quality materials, and a five-year warranty. To see what I'm raving about, go to sexwithemily.com and click on the Rabbit Company banner. Use code EMILY at checkout for a special discount. Thanks for listening. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. You know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com, where you can listen to all of our podcasts, and subscribe like the second you get there and you're like reading an article about like how to go down and her be like oh i should subscribe this site's really cool and i can listen to two shows a week and also thanks for following us on um twitter and instagram it's at sex with emily and snapchat's at sex with emily and god facebook.com slash sex with emily i love you all thanks for listening i'm here with menace What's going on, Emily? How, How are, are you doing you? today? Well, good, good. Um, hi, welcome to our new studio. I know. We, uh, I got chills and stuff. We put together a new studio in Los Angeles. and uh, West Hollywood. WeHo. And, WeHo, uh, yo. That's crazy. <sighs> thank you, and thank so, you for everything. So, how okay, have you been in thing. your personal life, though? Oh, my personal life has been really, I have to say, it's been good. I actually had a date with mm-hmm. someone that I met um, in San Francisco. Oh, I knew it. But that's all I'm going to say about this for now. Mm-hmm. And there's definitely going to be more on the next show, I promise, because there's something more urgently I have to, more urgent. At this okay. Moment. There's something more urgent I need to share. Though my sex life is always important. We have two really hot guests on the show today. And I know oftentimes, like, men, it's the way we do this. He'll just show up. I'm like, oh, these, you don't, you know, you're mm-hmm. not often briefed or whatever. We yeah. need to tell you a little bit about them. But... You know about Fifty Shades of Grey, the Uh movie, the whole thing. Well, this is this new TV show called Submission that's coming on. It just came out in Showtime. There's been like Mm -hmm. a few episodes. And they're saying it's like the real Fifty Shades of Grey. Like it shows how it's like truly like a better version of it because it shows all sides and why women really desire it. It's hot and sexy and it's kind of like soft core on Showtime. So we got two episodes to watch ahead of time. And Skin Diamond's Mm -hmm. here and um, the other star. She's been on the show before. She's a porn star. And I... They gave us two, the access code to two shows. So, mm-hmm. of course, today, I'm like, you know, I watched one last night. And then today, I was like, I got to go home at lunch. Anyway, I'm going to watch the other half hour. And it's hot, right? I saw the first one. So, I'm in my house, getting ready, showering, multitasking. And I have my phone, because I forget my laptop in the office, watching this really hot sex scene. Mm-hmm. So, I'm in the bathroom. I'm like, watch it. I'm like, wow, it's really hot. And all of a sudden, I hear this buzzing. Because I always get like, I always let bugs into my house. Yeah. By mistake, I leave the door open. A lot. Uh-huh. Um, because the I just think it's nice California. Here. It's yeah, nice, yeah. but you're like, whatever. But then every night, it's like a moth or a bee, but nothing's ever happened and they go away. So I'm sitting here and I hear a bee. I'm like, no big deal. Buzzing. So I get so caught up in this in this hot sex scene where this woman's having a fantasy, but it's actually real life where these two guys are going down on her. And it's like her husband and they're his best friend. And all of a sudden I realize the, the, the buzzing gets louder. It's in my ear. There's a bee in my ear and I'm completely what? distracted because I'm so turned on by this hot show. There was a bee I almost got sung in by your bee. ear. And I've never been sung by a bee and I'm very actually afraid of bees, like afraid of getting stung. And in this moment, I was so distracted by sex that I almost got stung. 
And I thought that was wow. interesting testament to that I was really into this fucking you hot show. Escape death. <laughs> Hopefully, you let the bee free though, right? The bee. No, got I away. stomped it. Actually, no. it, was, it was dead. It was dying. It was a dying bees bee. Are in, bees because are in I always al- right now. Here's the thing: I always allow we bugs need bees into my house to survive. No, no, it was Earth. like a. De- it was a half dead bee because I certainly <laughs> did not kill it because it was in my hair, caught uh, up in my hair. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing, <laughs> and um, yeah. Getting so watching porn, getting bees in my hair, I've like re done my whole house in the new office things are good like i've not read i've moved it uh-huh. around so it makes more sense in my life and yeah. um you know things are good That's for you super good i'm great um i've been doing uh all these charity events with the habit burger um i know food chain and they they've been amazing and we uh we raised a bunch of money for um hope for paws which is a great organization for animals and then we just did uh another one uh, in Long Beach for uh, lymphoma research, and so they've been great. And so we have one more tomorrow in uh, Garden Grove, California, with um, the Habit Burger, and uh, this time we're raising money for uh, Parkinson's uh, research. So okay. if anybody is into that, you're in the area. All the details are at lunchwithwoody.com. I'm part of uh, the show called The Woody Show. My okay. Name, well, I'm really proud yeah. of you, Menace, because I know you. Like you've got a lot of stuff going on, and you're not often like. You bring up things casually, I'm like, wait, what's yeah. your what's your Instagram? And you're not like pushing. Mm-hmm. Like, this is our own thing here. But I felt that when you did your first one last week, a few yeah. weeks ago, you mm-hmm. did your first yeah a charity t- event, charity yeah, event, yeah. and it was like you were talking about it like really passionately, like this means a mm-hmm. lot. And I want, yeah. and I was like, yeah, you guys go out and support Menace, and you know everyone should. Although I didn't, yeah, but it no, was like it's out of the good. city, Don't it was like far it. away, yeah. But um, like twenty minutes. But I, but then I saw like your 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 Snapchat, uh-huh. which you're really good at Snapchat. Thank you. Um. And I was like, wow, there's a, looks like there's a lot of people there. Like, man, is, is he like calling like people like, hey, come in the picture because a lot of people came out to see me and eat a burger. And it was like crowds. I'm like, well, maybe there's something else going on. <laughs> and then I yeah. saw you the other day and you're like, there were 700 people that came out to see you. Yeah. At an event. And I'm not saying like that's, yeah, I know you're, su- no, no. but I was like, that's like, I had an event, like sometimes like two people show up <laughs> and it's fine. I'm just so grateful they're there. No, no. The, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. No, the show, the radio people show. People love you. In the morning. They love this guy. Okay. Really successful in Los Angeles. And I thank everybody for that. But if you can please come out. <laughs> He's like, but come to the next one. That's great. I'm just saying that I had a heartfelt you moment to you and that, that you're doing great work and the show's really good and yeah. people love you. And I mean, I, I, I feel like I was the first who really mm-hmm. knew I loved you. Oh, and now everyone's you. realizing how great you are to hang out with an oh, emperor. Thank so you so that's much. Oh, okay. So here's the deal. We got to start talking to our guests who just joined us here. So thank you. We're going to get into that in a moment. But when we have guests on the podcast, Menace, this is part of things that you don't know. Uh-huh. I know you know a lot of things that go on, but we send them a form to fill out. And one of the questions is like, they hate me, do you have it? There was like, well, do it if Menace yeah. isn't there. <laughs> it actually has a box that says like Menace. Yes. No. Yeah. I mean, I delete anybody sends me an email. No, I'm kidding. We don't I send don't these. Care. This is just like, what's your name, address, <laughs> yeah. what's your picture, what's your Twitter. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So one of the questions uh-huh. is any topic off limits. And that's how we figure out what not to ask them. Mm-hmm. Right? Because we, we're yeah. polite. So Skin said there was no questions off limits, except we cannot do a Game of Thrones spoiler. Which I thought was funny. Like of all the things you could talk to her about, like not that. So we found a sex in the news story just about this topic, but we will not spoil it. Woman seeks Game of Thrones revenge on X. So scorned X lovers often turn to the internet in the wake of a bad breakup. They trash each other. They do bad things, right? They're des- or they desperately seek sympathy or, or vengeance and some, or some combination of the two. There's even a whole genre of revenge porn just for this reason. But this week, one man's sad attempt to garner support for his newly single plight backfired in viral fashion and for good reason. So the Reddit user, this guy who scorned, Khaleesi scorned, he's 29. He took the social network Reddit to share a problem he's been having since ending things with his lady love, whom he refers to as Danny. It's an alias. I could provide the short version, but here we go. He does it in the post. I cheated on my ex during our relationship, and she found out shortly after we broke up. She's blocked me and everything, but briefly unblocks me every Monday to send me Game of Thrones spoilers before I can watch. How can I get her to stop? <laughs> she is torturing him. Yeah. Like literally like torturing. She's like, you're blocked. Oop, guess what? Nope, you're not. This is what Why happened. Why is he still following her anyway? Well, no, but she blocks him. That's stupid. So um, in the course of his cry for help, he admits that he did have a lot of jealousy issues because she had so many male friends and had slept with a lot of guys. And um, But this would not hold up in a court of law. But he indicates that there was a direct link between his wandering eye and his ex's promiscuity. Mm-hmm. So he shared that she got him hooked on the series. Um, but when he travels abroad, it was hard to get a reliable stream. 
So since publishing the story, the tables have turned with Danny being heralded on social media as a heroine and generally applauded as a modern day feminist icon. What? Well, because she's like, you know, hey, dude, oh, guess God. what? This is how I'm really going to burn you. OK, mm. the rent is personal skin. What would you do if someone did this to you? Would this be the worst thing a guy's ever done to you or a woman or anyone? I would. Well, see, I would just I would just block the person. Right. So that I couldn't. But she, that's true. And yeah. he probably doesn't understand two-way blocking. Because I, that's what I, I mean, said. I was like, I just mean, block her back. Because she blocks him. And then, I mean, if she's a real what's going internet on. troll, she's making multiple accounts to like tweet him. She keeps doing it yeah. right. But <laughs> It's kind of like, ugly. You can't just, stop it. Or say, she'll have her friend do it who's friends with him on Facebook. Yeah. Like, it, there's no her. end. She can get in. <laughs> I love her too. Funny. So anyway, we thought about you for just that. stay off the internet or just watch it. You People know? are so revengeful. You know, revengeful, though. Like, I've yeah. never... I mean, if you... Okay, so well, let's say hello to both of our guests. Ashlyn Yenny and Skin Diamond. Thank you for joining us. Have you ever done anything that's, like, vengeful when you were dating someone? Have you ever been like, oh, I'm mad or I had anyone do something to you? I was just curious. I find, for me, I the best revenge is to pretend that they don't exist anymore because that... The one thing that will drive someone completely insane is to just ignore them and then like mm-hmm. even Show no matter what care. they do it's true <laughs> just per, be like eh, doesn't bother me sorry and then that'll that'll drive them real mm-hmm. crazy that's what i do <laughs> i agree i agree that that is the very best like because and it's so hard for people to do ashlyn yeah. what about you um i did get revenge on one guy in particular in a way that it just it bothered him a lot because he knew it was about him. So a few years ago, I wrote and produced a short film and I made this character based off of him and this one night in what he did to me. And it was, he's just, he's such a piece of shit. He's right. just such a douche. <laughs> he was such a douche. Like making me go from Uber to a gay nightclub and telling me he was there and he wasn't there. And then making me go to another bar telling me he was there, he wasn't there. And then finally when I got, no, I'm not kidding you. When I got to the bar <laughs> where he finally was. Look at Skin's face. She's what? like disgusted. I so get it. when I get to the bar where I finally see him, he's like, oh, hey. Like acting like a douchebag, of course. Like nothing happened. And it had rained like the t- two times it rains in LA, you know. And I have curly hair, so it was up. <sighs> it was not a night for down hair, you know. Right. And he's like you need to take your hair down. And I'm like, I, need, uh, what? Um, I don't need to, no, it gets better. I was like, I'm not taking my hair down. And he was like, um, mind you, he was in the business. So he was right. a manager. And so then he was, uh, he was like, well, you're talking to a really big director right now. You need to take your hair down. And I was like, I'm not taking my hair down. And he s- takes his heel stamps on my foot really, really hard. And then grabs my ponytail no, no. to pull my hair out. And I was like, so embarrassed. I was like, are you kidding me? This is not real. None of this is real. Oh my God. So then Jeez. I was like, I need to write this short film. And I was like, <laughs> really excited to write this character. And I just, with my writing partner at the time, we were like, what are we, how are we going to make this guy horrendous? And I was like, I got the story. Got it. Don't even have to make it up. Right. You're like, so, this just oh, happened yeah. to me. Yeah. These kind of guys exist. So Break it down. Seen so like, it. And then he did that. And I love telling people, I'm like, no, that's based off a real person. That person what exists did you in see, life. Had you been dating him when all those things happened up until that point? I mean, like, like we'd only been seeing each other for like right. a month. Oh, it was thank God. very new. I love when guys oh, are assholes. At least they're doing you a favor when they're assholes was, in the beginning. In the beginning. You're like, yeah. thank exactly. God I didn't spend two years with them. But back, and, and one yeah. thing back to um, what you were saying, Skin, like, that is true that it's, well, that's great. You got good art. Oh, no, see, I, I wish I could do that. But you did great art. Now, <laughs> yeah. No, my whole show, like, I tell stories. It helps. It's like, it's life. But I also think that I've recently gone through breakup. And the hard thing is, and I'm trying to, like, just really, not like even Bert pretend they don't exist and like how you really have to do that and you're so right it's about super breakup. hard it is yeah. so hard because now they actually do exist because you're friends with them on facebook and mm-hmm. every, they're everywhere right mm-hmm. instagram and you could yes you could be smart you could be strong and like block sometimes you don't want to block you still kind of want to stalk <laughs> but the, i'm being honest i've had like the refresh 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 oh, yeah. it's terrible have you guys ever done that when you're like trying not to, okay i don't do it i i no, stopped i, do I stopped you know, last week i i yeah I, I don't do it either right Ever. But Ever. but when you finally get to that We're point, curious people by Because my advice yeah. is always, you know, take six months off from talking to someone. Like, do block them. Mm-hmm. You know, don't mm-hmm. just have no contact. And that's when you can, you know, heal. Like, and I've always told people, do your work around this and like figure out who you are, what your part in the relationship mm-hmm. was. But a lot of times we're just like, you know, like who's she? Who's that bitch? She's with on Instagram or whatever. So, but it is true. Going back to the best thing is just to like cut them. And mm-hmm. I've learned that mm-hmm. in, later in life that I should actually listen to my lessons. But it does help if you know someone's a douchebag, you cut or them. Or therapeutic, or first, you write therapeutic, a story about them. Or you write a story and then. But you, you already hate it, right? 
oh yeah and then you tell everyone the story later in life that's a great <laughs> i love that that's I, a really that's a really good way to get revenge because i wish i could be more like oh and he, he had no sneaky. idea oh he I, didn't he, even know he saw the short film and it would never occur to him that it he was he didn't him. even know you know what i mean like he's like oh that's oh that's great i'm like you um oh, that's how big a douchebag he is. I, exactly, that's what I'm saying. exactly. <laughs> the bigger the douchebag they literally he wouldn't the more even, oblivious like, they are more oblivious yeah. it's like mm-hmm. everybody right those mm-hmm. are the people who are not self-seekers yeah. and they're not figuring themselves out so they're great because i've had guys in the show like that was really cool i'm like i really just talked about how you never went down on me once for a month and that you were cheap ass password but you your ego like i talked about that, you yeah, okay. exactly <laughs> so that's cool <laughs> yeah um anyway so have fun hi menace hi hi please meet um I'm, ashlyn and skin are you i know time? i've been here yeah i yeah, know uh, i was gonna share my story i think the only thing that i revenge. did revenge wise uh when i was doing a morning radio show in in san francisco i was dating i was dating this girl and i think i was like on the top of the world i was like oh this girl's awesome blah blah blah. and uh one day we go to old navy and we're at the old navy and we're just like walking around on market street whatever and she sees this guy that she went to high school with right and so i guess this is the guy that she had a crush on in in high school whatever so then they ended up start talking when i didn't know and then like they're texting blah 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 so she wants to break up with me to get with this guy and I could just tell, you can just, some people, they just suffer from douche face. Right. So you yeah. know, like, automatically, like, this is a douchey person, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm like, there's no, there's no way this guy is cool. But she ends up, like, breaking up with me and getting with this guy. And I happen to be in uh, in that. a nightclub, and I'm in the, the VIP area, so I'm looking down at the at the general area whatever and he's there with some other girl <laughs> making out with no her way. so i hit her up and i don't even tell her i was like hey i'm at this club blah blah, blah. you should uh, roll through because we were still cool and uh and we and i take her up to the vip i was like oh hey by the way there's your boy down there <gasps> and then no way. she like got super mad and went down there and then i was like yeah, we, we we can't never get back oh, together. That's but good. I'm just I, saying, you know. I feel like that's that's like not that's an even act yeah. of service. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, exactly. that's not even like yeah. a yeah. venture here. Yeah. Right. I, mean, I don't know. Service. I think I thought it was kind of, you know, <laughs> I love it. He's throwing like salt the, in the, yeah. the dude's game, whatever. But yeah. Yeah. you know, I got it though. I don't know. I I'm sure that. I've done things. People, but it was pretty awesome how it all came. That's awesome. You're like this guy's a douchebag, so and you should know he's a douchebag, and a lot of them are. That's what happens. I just don't really like that word today. I'm trying to think if I've ever, ever done anything. I'm sure I have. Mostly people get mad at me. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think it's like 99% of the time they're mad at you. I don't see you being a re- getting revenge on anybody. No, I'm no. too like, oh, I'm so sorry. It didn't work. See it's you later. Me. Bye. I don't we'll, know, think about it. We'll still go on vacation to, wanna, together. Yeah, I'm like friends she, with all my exes. Men all her exes just, she goes on vacation with, with their current girlfriend. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's like we're so all San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Like I moved here. Okay, so now this is so different. But I was there for twenty years. Moved here a few years ago, and I'm not. We're so different. But Sam, mm-hmm. I don't know. My friends are just more. I don't know. Open, and that we're all mm-hmm. really cool with it. And that mm-hmm. if you date someone for a while and you actually really like them, then you know you can hang out. Which yeah, is a good thing, right? I, I don't think there's anything wrong being friends with your. Like exes. if you can still be emotional, I, like we don't want I just sex think anymore. These guys, it's been yeah, so long. Yeah, like we, if she truly knows me. We love each other. I think this, these guys secretly want a threesome, or no. they're just backburning you just in case doesn't work out with their current we'll find out who knows maybe it's me but like I don't think like that I think you are someone Mm -hmm. who's valuable in my life and you know this is what happens but okay now we're gonna give a little shout out to our sponsors let's give them some love okay guys it's time to talk about what's in your pants and for once I'm not talking about your penis I'm talking about your underwear think about it it doesn't matter if you're wearing a suit or sweats you spend almost 24 hours a day in your underwear not only that and some of those days Someone else might see you in your underwear, so obviously you want a pair that makes you feel comfortable and confident. For me, this has been a challenge. Well, until now. Have you tried MeUndies? They are seriously so stylish and soft. Mendes, you love MeUndies. I love MeUndies. It's been, you told me about them first. Yeah, uh, I've been using them for quite a while now. Everybody on the Woody show, the other show that I do, the we we all have them, love them. It's made out of a material called Modal. You're not. Right. It's softer than cotton. You 
it, what's great about it is too is like if you buy it and you don't like your MeUndies, they they give it to you for free. But what? that's not going to happen because no. I'm telling you, I know we're talking about underwear here, and you're thinking, okay, underwear, I'll just go pick that up at some random store. But I'm telling you, once it, I actually sleep better at night wearing MeUndies. Yeah. And I'm no, like, no bullish right now. I'm telling you. No, it's a, it kind of became like my security blanket, like my comfy. Mm-hmm. Like I come home and I'm like putting on the MeUndies and the Uggs. That's yeah. all I do. That's all I wear. I love, I love that you love them too. They are really called the world's most comfortable underwear and it, it's true. MeUndies has so many styles for men and women and limited edition prints to help you make a statement with your underwear, whether anyone can see them or not. And like men said, if you don't love your first pair of MeUndies, they're free. No questions asked. They don't make you send them back. Nothing no, like that. But you. But that's not going to happen. Not going to happen because you're going to be obsessed. Right now, Sex with Emily listeners can save 20% off your first order. Shipping's free in the U.S. and Canada. And you save up to $8 a pair with the Me Undies subscription plan. Just go to MeUndies.com slash Emily to save 20%. That's MeUndies.com slash Emily. Okay, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Okay, let's talk to our guests. Welcome our guests. On today's show, I'm joined by the two stars of the hot new Showtime series Submission, Ashlyn Yenny and Skin Diamond. So I talked about Submission earlier in the show. You guys missed this. I almost got, I almost got sung by a bee actually watching the show. It's Showtime's new because I was so friggin' turned on that I didn't know that a beer was a bee was in my ear. Oh. <laughs> it's Showtime's newest late night series about kink, exploring your fantasies, and of course BDSM, written directed by adult filmmaker Jackie St. James taps into the Fifty Shades of Grey market, but it takes a step further into a more realistic portrayal of the BDSM community. And cool. I'm here with Ashlyn and Skin. So it's actually a, a scripted show. It is. Yes. Okay, cool. Because mm-hmm. I was thinking, I was like, is this a reality show? Or? No. No, mm-hmm. so totally scripted. No, That's it's cool. scripted. It kind of right? reminded me of the L word. Yeah. yeah. Do people say that? I uh, love the L word. Is a that, little bit. Yeah, some I, people have said that. Yeah. The L word or... Definitely Fifty Shades, or I, I kind of it reminds me a little bit of Sex in the City in that it yes, kind of revolves too. around three women mm-hmm. and they're all so different. It's like the different personality types, yeah, that are involved in the world of BDSM. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. the, I, I can't even think of anything that's been like that. There isn't. That's sense. why. It's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This that's is why. And you're on a great network, Showtime, which has yeah. been killing it lately. Yeah, yeah, you guys are killing it. I mean, I think I thought it was great. So let me just tell you a little bit here, real some background, Ashlyn actress and you may remember from the cult horror film franchise the human centipede one and two menace do you see human centipede uh unfortunately yes you are obsessed right okay. i did not see but the second she's one she's also starred in a bunch of indie films tv uh yeah. tv roles and now she's playing this shy yet sexually curious i love your role ashley in submission which she's going to tell us about and skin diamond welcome back to the show award-winning adult film film star and one of the best known and everyone I talk to literally they're obsessed with you so it was funny because last time you were on the show I had the assistant it was like two years ago lovely girl but she often didn't show up sometimes for things like mm-hmm. shows when she needed to but then she was like when's skin coming skin coming I'm gonna be there and she loved you and she's obsessed she's awesome I'm just oh. saying like, and everyone and everywhere I go though like you're you're like you had a very like sharp direct rise to like start, you know fading Thank in you. that world I just I just like what I do, I guess. <laughs> it's, good. Good. It's, good. it's fun. I love that you, because yeah. Ashlyn, this is your first kind of sexy mm-hmm. role. Mm-hmm. Um, and now you're working on your next passion project, mm-hmm. which is songwriting. Yes. You're going to sing now and do that too, and porn and act. Yeah. I just She's started writing, writing lyrics and writing melodies. And um, I, I just released my first single a few days ago, and I'll be releasing more you music did? videos in the next few, in the next month. I lots of surprises oh my god <laughs> so where you you just, people can find it where? yeah you can find it the music video is up on YouTube and you can uh, find the song on iTunes Spotify Amazon um, iHeartRadio <laughs> cool love it it's called Fire you should listen Fire. to it Fire okay mm-hmm. check it out Fire so Ooh. tell me about submission in your own words mm. how would you guys talk about it no one's ever asked me that question <gasps> That's so interesting. Um, well, like, what's your perspective on it? Like, what, what got you interested in doing the show that's kind of like the real Fifty Shades of Grey? Oh, well. More realistic, okay. let's say. Well, when I, I mean, when Fifty Shades came out, for me personally, I was not a fan at all because it was a very bad portrayal of the BDSM world, which is a world that I've been so heavily involved in for so many years. So it was kind of like a, like almost like a personal insult. <laughs> like, what is this? So when Jackie St. James um, approached me about this project, 
I was immediately like, yes, because, sorry, I just slammed my <laughs> fist on the table. The I'm so excited. <laughs> um, I was immediately on board because I think it's really important to show um, a, a, this world from a, a good perspective, from a perspective that embraces it and isn't trying to shock people, even though the acts themselves are shocking. It's like... It, like so the problem with Fifty Shades of Grey is more like people are like... First of all, just that they're watching a film about it. Like, BDS, I just don't get it. It was it was confusing to them what it meant. Well, the problem with Fifty and- Shades is it wasn't consensual BDSM at all. And with BDSM, the number one rule is it's consent. consent. Yeah. So that right there kind of just warped the entire idea of it. Right. And it, it. It portrayed women who are into BDSM as these frail little, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, but okay, I'll get tied up, but I don't really like it. But that And that's not exactly. what BDSM mm-hmm. is. Like A true submissive is like, yeah, slap me in the face. Yeah, that's awesome. No, do it harder. <laughs> you know, and it, it's not like a lot of sub, like submissive women who like really heavy play are very strong women. And that's why they're so they know what they want and they know that that's what they like. And they're they end up being power bottoms in that way. It seems that there's more women into this than men, at least from what I see. Is well, that, there's a lot is there a of men that are submissives as but well. But they don't put it out there no. like women do? Not as I, much. Yeah. They do exist, of course. Yeah, I think it's more <laughs> kept money. under the kept under the rug from... Well, maybe not all the time, but because a lot of men that are into very heavy play are mm-hmm. like, you know, politicians or, you know, lawyer yeah. people that if you were to find out about them, it would be very bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, so a lot of people keep it under the That's under the, the thing. And it... And it I gotta admit, the stereotype. A lot of men I know who are into it are more of that, like businessman in control, laced, like yeah. has so much money, but like wants to be dominated. You know, wants mm-hmm. to be dominated and like in a diaper and you know, yeah, spanked. <laughs> yeah, and no, no, no judgment. At least he knows. Uh, yeah. On the uh, on the I mean, morning no, show, I've never been on the morning show uh, that I'm part of, they uh, one of our guys just went to DomCon and did a, a bunch of interviews, and then the stuff that they're coming back with is just like. It's crazy what people are really oh, into, yeah, we'll you know. See. Well, because you men, you mentioned the diaper stuff, and it's right. just like, oh yeah, it was that on another level. Mm-hmm. Well, know? and that's exactly yeah. what the show is trying to do. Is yeah. like, for instance, like depicted in this way where it's not crazy, where mm-hmm. it's most a lot of people are into this, and it's not supposed to be this like, oh well, they're freaks or they're weird or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all of us, everyone is a freak. Everyone yeah. has <laughs> right. a weird side to them. Mm-hmm. Every exactly. single person does. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so I think Jackie, when she saw Fifty Shades, she, or even, I think she read the books, she was just, she was grossed out. She was like, this is the, not the right portrayal of this at all. So she took on a very huge feat in, you know, wanting to create a series and she wrote every episode herself. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's 180 Mm -hmm. pages of, you know, basically dialogue with sex scenes thrown in. Three sex scenes. Three sex scenes per episode. They're hot. So here's the thing, <laughs> is that what I think, what, there was, I agree with you on all the things you said about Fifty Shades. My whole thing was, yeah, there's a lot of problems you can have with it, but what I do like is it started a national dialogue and it got a lot of women exactly. who had never, mm-hmm. ever, you know, mm-hmm. read anything like this, thought, oh, wow, this speaks to me on a deeper level. Like, do I really want that? You know, do I really? No, you probably might not want a red room of pain, but you're in the Midwest. I'm from Michigan, so I can say yeah. you're like probably like married mom in the Midwest. You've been, you're not like in sex with your husband and, you know, you're not not turned on anymore you don't know why and you're thinking wow to be taken I've ne- nothing spoken to me on this level and maybe it spiced up her relationship with her maybe yeah. or she maybe it gave you the again. confidence to actually talk to about something exactly that, you wanted that she and never did that before stuff. so yeah. that was the thing I like but what I yeah what I, I agree was, with you on that so that was the only thing <laughs> one of the only things but what I but what I think is interesting what is confusing and what I like about your show submission is that the other thing that's missing for people they're like they don't even get the like talk about like the dub some not they don't even get why women how pain can feel pleasurable. Mm-hmm. Like the basics, but it's like, that must just be pain and she's grinning. Mm-hmm. Can you like kind of speak? Because I know Skin, you've also had experience in your real life BDSM mm-hmm. and maybe now Ashlyn too. I'm not sure. Well, uh, I don't want <laughs> to make assumptions. Um, <laughs> well, we did because we had a BDSM consultant on set as well as Skin. So um, Skin was very important to me as, as me portraying Ashley because she helped guide me along with mm. how I developed the character Ashley because she's this girl who basically 
it's like most people she doesn't really know what she she's in she's in a you know a relationship where she's basically having bad sex and realizes you know what i don't want this anymore and she doesn't go seeking bdsm it just happens to kind of fall into her lap and then she becomes interested in it and then she kind of she chooses to go into it. She makes the choice herself. She right. wants to do this. Because she's the same kind of thing, though. She picks up a book yeah. called Slave. It's kind of like exactly. Shades Grey. So I'll, I'll go back. We'll talk about We'll get more into BDSM because I love that you brought yeah. this up because this is how it opens Menace. It's the best scene. This is why I love this because it opens up. Ashlyn's having sex. She's like, nice. looks like a nice, you know, nice. Normal Midwestern. Normal girl. Midwestern girl. <laughs> and her boyfriend's like pounding her from behind, right? Like, not in, like, an aggressive... She's just, like... And she's, like, the boredest look on her face. She's like, did I put... Did I have to... Is my shopping cart on Amazon still open? Did I order their shoes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just so bored, right? Mm-hmm. He's pounding, pounding, pounding. And then... um, And you're just, like, you know... And all of a sudden, he just comes. You're like, ah, oh, you roll over. And then and then you guys get in this fight. Mm-hmm. And you have this fight that I've heard so many times by, like, listeners, callers. And that is, you're like, I can't orgasm during penetration alone. Yep. And he's like, well, all the women I've dated before have. <laughs> course, which is, and, yeah. and the woman's like, yeah. probably lying, faking. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, um, and you're like, I can't do it. You're like, I mean, I still enjoy it. You're like, I need foreplay. And mm-hmm. it's like, end scene, they break up. Which, you know, these are the basic tenets, what we... Not that everybody no, we hear about that all, all the time. time so right? I love that in like the first three minutes, I'm like, yes, yes, it's so, so I feel relatable. Like that part of it is so relatable. And it can just still speak home. to so many women. I was yeah. like, that mm-hmm. was the perfect. Yep. And then cut to three minutes later, you're like watching Skin get banged by her boss at work, mm-hmm. which was awesome and hot. <laughs> so and you're hot. watching her. So that was your first. So you took on that role as mm-hmm. the as a newbie exploring that world. Yeah. And had you so okay? So tell me about now. I want to get into like making of the show. So did you open up? sexually in a way or yeah well it definitely (laughs) changed I mean the whole show definitely changed I think a lot of us our perception of what BDSM was because honestly when I went in for it I had no idea what it was like I had reservations about even auditioning for the show because I actually went not my first audition was for the character of Jules it wasn't for Ashley okay and then Jackie and Paul asked me to come in and read for Ashley and I I was like I can't do mm-hmm. this this is way too much like I, I didn't even know the extent of what she was going to go through but I was just like I don't know if I could play the girl who gets into BDS I'm like I don't know if I can actually do that as an actor and um then I was like but you know what fuck it I'm gonna try I'm oh, just, oh, sorry and um so then it went in and you know Jackie she, Jackie wrote me a list and it was like 34 very specific <laughs> things I was going to have to do and mind you like 30 of them I'd never done before you know and uh, a couple of them there's one thing in particular that's never been shown on tv which you're gonna see I think <gasps> in episode five it's, mm. it's super interesting but also just like the res- being restrained for however long it is but it's also filming so it's well, not what do you mean you're being restrained that's never been seen, been seen before no that's not what um the thing that you'll never that's never been shown on tv before that's something completely different oh okay but as well as being like restrained and you know flogged or whatever it is or vibrated or you know blindfolded all of that stuff I did do all of that but it's fake it's tricked out so it's not actually this, in yeah. the in the scene right in the scene so but did you have to pre- to prepare yes did you go have an experience with like that, like that well kind of, yeah I mean yes I'm experienced dominatrix I just something? did a ton of research I did a ton of research but like I would it. think you have to do research no but come on you can read about it. I could talk. I could tell everyone how to do it right now. You but want me I've... to give away all my secrets? Yeah. <laughs> Method acting? Okay. <laughs> Got it. So you learned. I learned. I learned a lot about it. And I learned that there are things that, you know, I wrote this in an article that's going to come out on Saturday. But I I personally, Ashlyn, don't like being restrained. I don't like being held down. Like, that's not my thing. I'm not. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't do anything for me. But Ashley, on the other hand, she does like that. So as an actor, having to play that... Ashley's your, the Ashley's role. Ashley's right. the role, yeah. Mm-hmm. So having to play that character and be okay... You do have to look in psychology. I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, so okay. it's like... It's almost like... But when I, as I was playing her, I remember the first time they restrained me, I was like, this is her. This is when I realized, I was like, okay, this girl, this is going to be amazing because she's... I'm, I, I dipped into her exact psyche at that moment. And I could go in and out of it, you know. Right. But it wasn't really turning you on, though, in the moment. Right? No. What about you? Like, okay, so because Skid, you have experienced the adult film. Mm-hmm. Were you, t- how were you turned on during your scenes? Was it um, really like, or was it more because it's script? I don't, not that porn isn't scripted as well, but it's a little different kind of script. Well, it was, um, it was interesting for me. I, um, 
Sorry. I, it, of course it's scripted, so it's hard to like, you know, there's, there, you're going to be cutting every once in a while, but I, I, I was just really trying to be true to like my, myself as a submissive because I, I have been a, a, a service slave to a master in real life, not off camera okay. before. So that, that I use that as an opportunity to really help guide Ashlyn with mm-hmm. her character okay. as well, to try to help her get into the oh, psyche. Oh, that's like, great. So you were there for her mm-hmm. to like say, how, t- explain to me mm-hmm. what's going through your mind skin when you're in one of these. Yeah, I mean. That's amazing. We okay. have a scene together. Yeah. I didn't get there yet. I'm like, <laughs> oh. I know they're going to hook up, but I didn't see it yet. They only showed you. Spoilers. And, um, <laughs> spoilers. You guys have to show, yeah. We won't like, give anything away, okay, but it was definitely this and mind you, we had to reshoot it. So yeah. <laughs> we did it a few times. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things where it was because of her experience that she was the best person, honestly. And Jackie was the best person to direct because as just an actor coming in, you know, they call us civilians coming yeah. in <laughs> for right. this, you know, I was guided in the best possible way I could be, mm-hmm. you know. So and it was, really it, was it was really fun because, I mean, because I, I, it, it was nice for me as a such a big advocate for the world of BDSM to to show people who were new to it like this is what it's really like mm-hmm. like doms aren't just throwing you and leaving you in a corner and not caring about your well-being at all like it's there's a lot of are you okay it does this hurt is this too much should I pull back do you want me to keep going like there's a lot of talk going on and that's what you scene. feel like is miss so so you feel like this corrects it submission shows the kind of a more realistic portrayal of BDSM. Yeah, it, it shows that there's a lot of different levels. Like, for example, my character, she's submissive, but she's very fiery. Like, she has a... She's she's actually very dominant, but she likes to be submissive. And so I like... I, I, I think it's important to show the different ranges. Yes, you get the submissive girls like, like, like the character Ashley, who's, you know, she's never done this before, and she's, you know, more innocent. And then you get the submissives that are like... I know exactly what I'm doing and I'm going to go out and get exactly what I want. And then you better hit me hard because, because that's what I like. (laughs) And that's what Dylan is. She's Mm -hmm. the the opposite end of the spectrum. Okay. Got it. Mattis, do you have any questions here about the BDSM world? You look, you look either you're really attentive or. Uh, I I do have some questions about the show. So, um, real quick, um, with you, Mm -hmm. how did your family, um, when they saw the first episode, what was their reaction? My family hasn't seen the show yet. Oh, they haven't? No. no it I, just came out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't oh, th- you don't want to see it. Well, I don't think they're <laughs> You gonna. blocked them on Facebook. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, no, no. I <laughs> yeah. mean, my family's in, like, I have an amazing family. Um, mm. But it's the same thing as, like, the Human Centipede films. Like, they just didn't, mm-hmm. it's not their thing, you know? Yeah. And I, I think Did my- Did they watch and support, though? Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Well, my mom and Nana came with me to the Human Centipede 2 premiere, which uh-huh. I thought was really, really like, such badasses you know Uh like my 80 year old grandma's sitting next to me watching (laughs) you know this is really cool stuff but as far as this show um i think my grandparents have seen it and Mm. then but my mom and dad haven't watched it which is like completely fine honestly i don't really Mm. care if they watch it or not it's not made for them you know (laughs) if i made movies for them they'd be hallmark (laughs) so um but they're very supportive i mean like anything they're like whatever you choices i take in life as an actor and this is for anybody mm-hmm. it's like i want to play these characters and there's a reason why i wanted to play ashley right and to tell a truthful story so it was it's cool yeah cool. Right. okay now skin my question last time you were on the show we talked about you you're bisexual mm-hmm. and i'm assuming are you how are you dating now or are you i don't know where you're at now well I seen you in two years <laughs> i know it's been a while i think the last time i came on the show i was date. i had a girlfriend mm-hmm. but now i have a boyfriend okay so. see that's why you gotta yeah. ask yeah. and how's that <laughs> is it monogamous um it's well we're it's it's mostly monogamous, but we like to Play. bring people in. Girls, in <laughs> yeah. But um, he actually is the man behind a lot of the music that I've been making. Oh, so I love it's, this. So he's inspiring you, and mm-hmm. you're he's he's you're inspiring him. I'm sure. Yeah, it's really nice. I love creative relationships like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. nice being able to do something besides just bang. Yeah. <laughs> besides just bang, but you're really good at. You're really sexy. There's a yeah. scene in there. You'll uh-huh. love this, where. Dylan Skin's character goes to the bathroom and has there's a woman at the coffee shop just like with her boyfriend who looks super bored. I love that all the women are like super annoyed with their boyfriends <laughs> who are just like boring and bad in bed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not that all guys are like that, but I can relate. <laughs> and then you like give her these looks over the counter, and next thing you know, they're in the bathroom having sex with Skin and this girl, and she takes she takes her 
crave Vesper necklace around mm-hmm. her neck. And she uses a vibrator and it's like the hottest scene. I'm like, great, she has a Vesper on her neck. It was really hot. Turns out it was the Vesper I gave to her last time she was on the what? show. The vibrating, hot, sexy necklace. But the scene was so yeah. hot. Yeah. yeah. You should see her. You're like chicks. a prop person. <laughs> I know. I should I'm like, oh my God. You're that a prop was so, master. I'm so yeah. honored. Well, I was so turned on. That was maybe when I got stung by the bee. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I'm well, awesome. it was um, It was really cool when when I when I knew about this scene and, and what was going to happen. I already had the necklace and I, and I approached Bo about it, uh, the, the um, DP. And I was like, you know, I have this vibrator necklace. I feel like Dylan would totally <laughs> Dylan have so this. Weird. Like, Dylan's a freak, so of course she has it. And then it was a fun little... That's so fun. Something that it. nobody's seen before. Scene, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was that was, that was a sexy scene. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, so um, with uh, Dom stuff, sorry. I don't know all the correct terms. That's okay. So I don't want to... That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> this is why you're like... It's 2016 you... if you say something wrong. No, we're not going to judge you, but, <laughs> no, but no, no. I think that this is a lot what? of... I yeah, want you to ask them. what guys are thinking. No, no, no. Uh, something also I noticed um, when we go out and interview people that I've noticed in that realm is this whole new pup play. There's like pup masks and stuff like that. Puppy play. There's yeah. also piggy play. Is that like pony new or play? is that how it's always been around? My personal favorite is kitty play. Okay. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> has that but always that's, been it's, around? Or it's been it... around for a while. It's, it's, um, a lot of the times with specifically puppy mm-hmm. play and piggy play, it's usually meant to be a kind of humili- humiliating act because, mm-hmm. you know, you're kind of like, oh, you're a filthy little piggy, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like a pig, you know, it's more, it's seen as more of a like degrading, like people that wanted to, to feel like, you know, um, but, but you can take it to many different levels. I mean, you can take it to any level you want, really. I mean, you could mm. be a piggy, but you could be a boar piggy and you could be a dominant piggy if you wanted. Mm-hmm. But I, I personally like kitty play cause it's, it feels more phenom, phenom, phen, no, no, no. <laughs> I be able to feminine say yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, and cats are bratty. So mm-hmm. I feel like that's it. It, um. It portrays yeah. my character. Do you worry about Churro more. or something? No, no, no. <laughs> but I just noticed it. I, I don't know. I For some reason, it keeps on popping up uh, every time we go out and uh, go to like a convention yeah. like that and interview people. And um, yeah, the, what was the other thing? Oh, the other thing is, have you ever, like, so when somebody is into that, have they ever broken it down uh, to say why they're, they're into it? Because just recently on... Um, uh, show that we had we had a uh, Jim Norton he's a he's a radio host and he's like suddenly I'm into feet now and I don't know why I want to worship feet and I'm so anybody that's like into you know Dom stuff like that have they ever broken it down why they're into it or for some reason they've always just Dom stuff in, or the feet, feet stuff or anything like that. yeah, yeah. Okay, or so like people that want to do pup play like well, some, do they know why they want to do that or is it just something I think it's just something that a lot of the time just happens like I feel like a lot of the fetishes that I've developed over the years mm-hmm. I didn't know I even they existed until the idea of it was presented and then yeah. after that I was kind of like yeah that for some reason that kind of turns me on and mm-hmm. I don't know why mm-hmm. why it happens that way I guess it but it, it is an interesting uh, subject to, to study it's because, big, because how, no why ever, people like things. You can really learn a lot about people by what their fetishes are, I yeah, think. because we can never get an answer. Yeah, uh, it's really when just we put developed. It, out there. it could be a lot of times it's from childhood yep. things or it's because mm-hmm. it's presented to you when you're mm-hmm. old. You're like, yeah. oh, that, that really turns me on. Like, Ashlyn, like your character in Submission, you read the book, Slave, mm-hmm. and then you're like, oh, mm-hmm. this might be interesting to me. So a lot Maybe, of times, yeah. I mean, it's not a fetish necessarily, but it's something that, that like maybe opening you your mind sexually. You didn't know existed didn't, and then it's right. packaged to you in kind of an interesting yeah. way. And then to, I think a lot of people, they kind of fall into this like, well, maybe. And then right. because mm-hmm. I feel like humans, we're so curious by nature. We're curious. We want to know. Right. So we want to know about people. It. We want to know about people's lives. We want to know everything. You know? Right. So when we give, we're given the opportunity to explore, you know, especially what is considered like a taboo subject, and it's in a healthy consensual way mm-hmm. why not and then people are like yeah. and then and then 
it'll spark on to more other, you know, other things and other things. And exactly. then all of a sudden you're like, wow, I have like nine fetishes and I had no idea. Right. You know, but, the, the, but then very, to you, that very first one, but then you know, to you, that, you're not, it's not even a yeah. fetish anymore. But it's not even a, right. Yeah. And, but using fetish in a way, just maybe it's what turns you on. Yeah. It doesn't have to be mm-hmm. necessarily a fetish if you're it into it. It doesn't. It can just be, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, so here's my other thing that like in the, I think it was something like in the book, in the slave or one, one of you like has a line where you're like, you know, he didn't ask for what he wanted. He took it from me, you know, but so there's that whole notion of women want to be taken, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of what the people are like, oh, rape. Fan. We're not talking about that. Like, we just like want to be desired at this like level that it feels like a man has to have. It's exactly. like that, that's the base level of like the ravishing and exactly. why we want that. And so, well, my first thing is like the psychology behind that, and, and which is why Fifty Shades of Grey spoke to so many women is because there is this certain sense of like, we just want a man to like take us and wrap us. Like he can't think, he can't eat, he just, he doesn't want yeah. us. Like, and that is, can be a great turn on in like the, the, the power play and the mm-hmm. role playing and stuff like that. But, and that is, that's a line from the book. Right. In the mm-hmm. series. Book, right. And so, yeah. And a lot of, I, I think it's not to be confused with um, wanting to be controlled exactly. in, in mm-hmm. all aspects of your life. It's right. just, when when a man is like, I need you so much, I'm gonna take you, and I can't, I can't say no to you, or you, whatever. Your, your like, sexual it's almost sex. like, wow, he wants me so much, he's just gonna take it. And mm-hmm. but then you know, in everyday life, like I'm the most stubborn person ever, and like, do not tell me what to do. Don't try to even like order <laughs> my yeah. like, order my bread for my coffee for me. Like mm-hmm. I get yeah. it, but but in sex, we're talking about. That's mm-hmm. what I want to get back to. Is that like it's. It's that, and it's not that everyone w- wants to even be, like, not, you know, wants to be, use abuse or use um, bondage or anything like mm. that. It's more like they just want to be, like, taken. And so that's, desired. like, the desire. Yeah, desired, for sure. Right. They want yeah. to be, exactly. They want that desire. And so I think that that's what a lot of people maybe don't make that connection. And even with the, the BDSM, mm-hmm. with the with the power yeah. flow, so that is a more, bringing more pain into it, that a lot of it is sort of on that spectrum and that why it's still confusing to people, like, how that feels good to mm-hmm. women you know and it's um it's complex it's mm-hmm. psychological it's it feels good it really does like on a physical level it's very power. complex and yeah. again it's like you wouldn't want every single guy to do that it's just like the the ones that you are really into you want them to be that into exactly you. and you don't right ex- so, okay so that was my question for you though skin so you I know you're in a relationship now but how would you find those partners or how would you see you personally or would you suggest if there's women listening who are like, yeah, I just want my, you know, my partner to come home or whoever come home and just like throw me on the bed, like just the basics of it. How would you express it to somebody? I would just, I mean, communicate. I mean, mm-hmm. as scary as it can be, because I mean, sometimes telling the person that you love, like that weird desire that that you don't know why it turns you on, but you just really want to try it. You never know what they're going to say. Just present to them you know in a in a sexy kind of way and then how would you do it maybe they'll I mean I don't know I guess (laughs) if I if I wanted my my boyfriend to to try something new I would probably already start foreplay like get him excited first and then while we're in the moment be kind of like hey you know, uh, I have this to try or what do you think about this while they're already Mm -hmm. so then it's it's so then it's like they're already in the moment with you and then you can kind of play off it that way instead of just being like sitting down at the kitchen table and being like, hey, this is a meeting now. So yeah, what right. would you like Here's to do Here's my contract. To me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. I want to know also, Ashlyn, are you dating anybody right now? Yes, I am. I've had the same Tell. boyfriend for seven years. <gasps> really? Yeah. Okay, so how does he feel about this? I mean, he, of course, was, he had his reservations at first when I was auditioning for the role, just because like any role, there's a part of you that gets in there, you know, and you, uh, all these things. But at the same time, he loved the research, (laughs) like not going to (laughs) lie. Right. He's like, okay. So does he hate watching the sex scenes? For sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, That is never fun. Like it's never fun. It's never fun just even watching your partner like in a film when you have to watch them be intimate with someone else it's just like ew stop what are you doing you know but, that's cool um, he was down but was there yeah. anything in it that you guys tried that you're like oh we might you know that kind of it's fun we might do that again um yeah there was a couple things yeah that i actually took from set that um we'd done in the series you can't tell me so good like i wanted to keep yeah, yeah. But there is some that's really cool stuff that we we did in the that i didn't expect that i was like oh this is actually 
Okay. That's actually not bad. Yeah, you well, know, I know. I know. That's, <laughs> that's what I like about it. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. <laughs> that's really how it starts. And honestly, it starts with just one like little thing, and your whole mind can open up. Yeah, like, handcuffs, mm-hmm. amazing. And with Mindful. exactly, and with Michael, he's so open to most things. And I think if when you're in a relationship and if you never, you know, I had an excuse because I had a series to prepare for. But I honestly think if I had come to him saying like, "Hey, I want to try," blah blah blah, you know, he would have. Honestly, I feel like most men are like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. sure. Wait, what do you want to do? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, because, because I feel like most people, was a lot of my girlfriends were very reserved people, right. especially sexually. It's like you're almost afraid to say what you want. That's the thing. And then just, that's why having these movies like Fifty Shades, like the submission series, like it's so, it's great. It's a I great thing. I can see couples thing. get into mm-hmm. it too. Hopefully yeah. maybe that, I always tell people like they don't know, because we talk a lot about communication on the show. So I always say, you know, well, listen, a lot of, a lot of couples actually do, they, they listen to my show together and they're like, mm-hmm. oh, well, Emily said it, or we, you know, we could try that thing she said. So I think watching mm-hmm. submission as a couple could be like, oh, would you ever think that would turn you on? And then like, yeah, yep, boom, there you go. You're in. Working Thank you it. both for this sexy discussion, Ashlyn and Thank Skin. You. I'm Thank so you excited <laughs> to keep watching Showtime. It's called Submission and it's on what nights? Thursdays. Thursdays, Thursdays. at 11 p.m. East Coast and Pacific time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if oh. you have the East Coast feed in LA, it comes on at eight, which nice. is a little bizarro because <laughs> you'll be like having dinner and then it's yeah, like, yeah. what? That's cool. <laughs> okay. Where can people find you both? Best place to find you? In- uh, oh yeah. Instagram uh, or Twitter. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Okay. And we'll find, we'll have that all on the, uh, on mm-hmm. the website. So uh, thank you both for, be- both for being here. I have five more questions for you. Okay. okay. Ooh. Quick, rapid fire. Don't okay. even think right. about them. Ready? Do we answer them one at a time or? Um, one at a time. So you're just going to go back and forth and okay. answer. Got okay. It. Ready? Sex with Emily. Top five sex questions. Number one. Okay. Skin. Biggest turn on. Confidence. Ashlyn. Biggest turn on. Humor. Biggest turn off. Skin. Bad odors. <laughs> Ashlyn. <laughs> Overly confident. Yes, I agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> craziest place you've gotten busy skin um oh, oh it's not fair hers is gonna be so good i know you should, you should do, do it do so ashley's hard first yeah. My, i'm boring mine's no I, I honestly don't i i don't think i've had sex anywhere besides like a bedroom or a hotel so i'm so lame um, and that's why i've got to jump in time. that's good just have to go back and forth <laughs> oh i know uh, uh so it's um, so I did a Spongebob parody porn so technically oh, I have I have had sex in a pineapple under the sea no way it's amazing girl found a mess we were <laughs> no way <laughs> wait no was way. it Spongebob square nuts sponge knob square pa- square nuts yeah oh my god we played the theme song for that <laughs> oh really on the morning show that I was on I love Sponge that Bob yeah I was Sandy the squirrel <laughs> Spongebob square nuts this yeah, is amazing a pineapple under the sea no one can yeah that. like come on that's you, the craziest come place on. you have to look up the theme song for that okay it's that's hilarious. amazing i met his eyes like i was I fell like, off his head okay so that's a good one wait so sexiest word to you either one of you can answer either time sexiest too. word sexiest mm-hmm. word there's so many words coming to mind i'm trying so, to not um <laughs> um uh there's can I say words? Yes, whatevs. Um, take my breath away. Because I'm into breath play, so oh, choke me, basically. Can... Gotcha. Oh, ooh. That's, 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 that's so hot. I know. I can't yeah. deal with her. I'm telling you, everybody's like, no, I can't deal me. with her. I'm like, I'm like thinking of a word. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what... It's okay. It's not a contest. I get it. I don't want to answer there. I don't want to answer after her. Um, <laughs> me neither. I'm not going to answer. I'm going to use hers. No. Hers is beautiful. Oh. It's just absolutely. I got I'll you share lunch. Mine is share. I got you lunch. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's a phrase. That's a sexist yeah. word. Mine that's was fun. just like, yeah, mine's a phrase too. Well, no, no, it's a word. Oh. Em- employed. <laughs> <laughs> really like right. that. That's okay. a phrase. What's the, what's, that's the one, what's the one thing um, you wish you could tell your, your younger self about sex you would, that you know now? Don't worry. Yeah, for sure. Chill out. Yeah. Just relax because... Be yourself. Okay. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both for being on the show. This is awesome. This is really fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And um, yeah, thanks everyone for listening. Was it good for you? Email me feedback at sexwithemily.com. Okay, guys, listen to me. I know some of you tune out every time you hear me talk about Kegel exercises. Well, guess what? 
you're making a mistake. Kegel exercises are not just for women. Try something for me now, guys. Tighten up the muscles you'd use if you wanted to stop the flow of urine. Congratulations! You just did a Kegel exercise. And doing these regularly can make an impact on your sex life. Kegel exercises can help you have stronger erections, better stamina, and more intense orgasms. You'll be blown away, literally, by the difference Kegels can make in your life. To make Kegel exercises that much easier to get into, I created Kegel Camp. It's an app that trains you, reminds you, and tracks your progress along the path to Kegels of Steel. And because I know you're competitive, I created 20 levels of intensity for you to work through. So, you up for the challenge, guys? Download Kegel Camp for your, from your iPhone today and tell me about your progress at feedback at sexwithemily.com. You can get Kegel Camp from the iTunes store or by going to sexwithemily.com and clicking on the Kegel Camp banner. See you at camp.